grade English language arts teacher from Crossings Christian School and an OERB master teacher. Today's lesson, Measurement Olympics, is coming to you from the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. Let's get started. The 2020 Summer Olympics may have been postponed until next summer, but guess what? You won't be missing out because it is now being hosted by you. You can plan and host your own Summer Olympics in your own home. I mean, the games have been going on every four years since 776 BC. No reason to keep the games from starting now. All Olympic games rely on some type of measurement system. Our focus in planning and executing the events will be to sharpen measuring skills. Let's talk about our wonder why question. Okay, have you ever wondered why we need accurate measures? Have you ever wondered why accurate measures are important in Olympic events? Many Olympic events have been won by the smallest of measures. Take Olympic medalist Michael Phelps of the United States. In Beijing 2008 Summer Olympic Games, he won his seventh gold medal and set an Olympic record in the men's 100 meter butterfly. With a time of 50-58, a hundredth of a second ahead of the second place finisher from Serbia, Phelps won by 4.7 millimeters. Okay, here's another one. The women's 100 meter final in the 1992 Barcelona Games was one of the closest track races in Olympic history. Five runners, including Team USA's Gail Devers, ran across the finish line at almost the exact same time, causing intense confusion and deliberation among officials. After carefully reviewing slow motion footage, Devers was awarded first place, and the runner crossing fifth was less than one-tenth of a second later. Now that's close. Measurement is crucial in determining Olympic winners. The Olympic timers consist of a team of 450 technicians who use more than 400 tons of equipment to ensure peerless accuracy timing. Today, it will be you heading up the measurement team. We do want to use the smallest unit of measure to be as accurate as possible. So let's start planning our Olympics. Okay. Step one, we are going to choose events that use measurement. Our events include the javelin, the shot put, the discus, a spear grab, a sponge squeeze, a water bottle flip, and a clean sweep. And we'll talk about those in just a second. Step two, collect materials and set up events. Measuring tape, I use two of these. You need about 10 feet of measure. Stopwatch, I'm gonna use my cell phone. Measuring cups or graduated cylinders. You need a scale. For the event, you need straws paper plates, cotton balls, pennies or spheres to grab, bowls or cups, sponges, water bottles that are about part way filled with the water. You need a broom, golf balls, a calculator, and you will need some tape. Step three, you're gonna need data sheets to record uh, your measurements. I have made some for you and you can find them at the bottom of the video. The next step is to create some medals. Um, you can make your own. I visited uh, the craft store and found some party favors and I just used Christmas ribbon to make some medals. So I have my gold. So I have a gold star. I have a silver star. And for bronze, it's black, so to be creative here. Or if you already have metals at home, you might want to just repurpose them and reuse them. Um, I found these lying, lying around the house, so you certainly could use those as well. On the setup, you can see that I have a tape measure with inches displayed and a tape measure with uh, centimeters displayed. I need 10 feet of measurement. So I had to tape two measuring tapes together. So I put them end to end. So on my centimeters, I had 150 centimeters. And then there on the 150 centimeters, I started my second tape. On my inches, my inches ended at 60. And then I started my next tape. I just taped them together so that I would have 10 feet of measurement. Last step, let the games begin. For the first event, we're doing the javelin throw. So I have a paper straw, okay? So we would ask you to stand on the starting line. 
I've lined my toe up at zero. I have my paper straw. I'm going to throw it back and throw it as far as I can. Let's go see what the measurement is. Okay, so that's where my straw landed. I have to decide if I want to go with the farthest measure or the back measure. Let's go with the, the back measure. So if I go with the back measure, remember whatever I do with one, that's what I have to do with all the events. So I'm going to take something that's straight, line it up, and then I'm going to move it over here to my tape measure. So here it landed right here, so I have to count. So 10, and it's 1 8, 2 8, 3 8, 4 8, 5 8. So 10 and 5 8. And then that also calculates to be about 29.2 centimeters. So I will record that information on my data sheet. The first tape measure measures 60 inches. So the measurement I just gave you is from the second tape measure. So I have to add those two measures together. The two measures together are 70 and 5 eighths inches, or if I change that to a decimal, I would get 70.625. I would round that to 70.63. On the centimeters, the first tape measure is 150 centimeters. My measurement from the second tape measure was 29.2 centimeters. I have to add those together for a total of 179.2 centimeters. I will throw the javelin three times. I will record those three distances on my data sheet. I will add those three distances together and divide by three to find my average or my mean. I will use that average or mean to compare to the other participants in our Olympics. Next is my discus throw. So I'm going to do the same procedure. I'm going to line my toe up at zero. I'm going to throw it like I would a frisbee. Line up at zero. I'm going to flick it out like I would a frisbee. And then I will find my measure and I will record it on my data sheet. I will do three trials for my discus throw. The next event is the shot put. This is a sitting shot put. So I will sit on my line at zero. I'll take the cotton ball and I'll put it in the palm of my hand, just like this with my hand open. I will use my elbow as a hinge to throw it as far as I can. Once I throw it, I will do the same procedure. I will use something that's straight to go and measure that farthest distance of that cotton ball. I will do three trials with the cotton ball. I will record and find the mean or the average. The next event is a spear grab. So I have some spears here in this bowl, and I have a, a scale here. I've set it uh, to grams. I'm going to be measuring in grams. You certainly can change that to ounces if you want to do that. Uh, you might want to do both, and you can compare them. I'm going to use my right hand to grab as many of the spears I can, shake them out. What's left in my hand, I'm going to put in the bowl here to measure how many grams. I have 122 grams in there. I'm gonna do it three times, put it on my data sheet, find the average. Our next event is a sponge squeeze. This time we're gonna use our left hand. So I have a sponge and some water that soaked up water pretty good. I'm gonna take my left hand, grab the sponge, Take it over the empty bowl and I'm going to squeeze as much as I can with my left hand. Just my left hand. I can only use my left hand. When I get finished, I'll return the sponge and then I need to measure it. Um, here I have a measuring cup from home, uh, which is pretty awesome because it has ounces and it has milliliters. So I'm going to pour it. Okay, so the thing with measuring liquid, you have to be eye level with it. So I'm going to have to get down close and look at it eye level. So this appears to have um, about 150 milliliters, uh, which is a little bit more than 5 ounces. Um, so that's not probably as accurate as using a graduated cylinder. So if you have a graduated cylinder, let's see what that looks like. You pour it into a graduated cylinder. Again, I'm going to have to look at it eye level, and it is exactly 150 milliliters of water. You will do that three times. You will record it on your data sheet and take your average. Next is our water bottle flip. 
I'm going to use my phone as a timer. I'm going to set the timer. I'm going to see how long it takes me to successfully flip all three bottles of water. So I have uh, just recycled some bottles here. I filled them up part way with water. So whatever bottles you use, all participants will use the same bottles of water. So I'm going to start my timer and then I'm going to start flipping. Yay, I got one. Stop. It took me a minute and 50 seconds. I bet you are better at bottle flipping than I am. You will do that three times. You will record your time. Uh, you will be looking at the hundredth of a second. You will average those times together and divide by three. All right, the last event is called Clean Sleep. So you need a broom and some golf balls. So the lines are measured 10 feet out from the start. So you can see where the flags are. So I got the front flag is approximately one foot in front of the back flag. My goal is to sweep the ball between those two lines. It cannot be touching the lines in any way whatsoever. I will do that 10 times, record how many of the 10 I get between the two lines, and I will repeat that three times. So I'll start the ball on the line. I will push it with my broom. My goal is to get it between those two lines. Okay, so I'm looking here. This one is not gonna count because it does not cross the line, so I can't count that one at all. This one, does count, it is between the two lines. So that's one point. This one counts because it's between two lines. That's two points. Once you and your family have completed the events, you'll tally up the points and celebrate. So everyone will have their individual card to fill out. So you will take a look at that. You will take that individual card, look at the points on there to fill out a scorecard for each event. So you'll have all the participants' names, and their measurements for each of the events. You will give them points based on whether they finished first, second, third, so gold, silver, bronze, or they get a point just for finishing. So here we will find out who wins in each event. Once we find out who wins in each event, we will come up with our overall winner. And then we will have step up to the podium. We'll find out who our 2020 measurement Olympic winner is. So that should be fun for the whole family. Here's your challenge. I want you to come up with your own Olympic event that involves measurement. Please give full directions on how you're going to compete in that event and how you're going to collect data. Send in your event and a picture of the event to teachers at oerb.com and make sure you tag us on social media on Facebook or Instagram at oerbok. -okay. You could win a prize. I cannot wait to see what Olympic event you create. Who knows? Maybe we will see you in the next Olympics. Thank you for tuning in today. I will see you soon.